You can take an entire course including topics in this video through our website and get a certificate of completion from RASOF, the online educational radio frequency institute located in Irwan, California. Instructions and coupon for taking this course is provided at the end of this video. Power amplifier is the last block which is used inside the transmitter before antenna and um, we can see from its name it's a power amplifier it amplifies the power and increases the amplitude of the signal. So uh, radio frequency amplifier or RF amplifier is a tuned amplifier that amplifies high frequency signals used in radio communication. What is the purpose of this? Why do we have to amplify the signal? As we talked in LNA part, we said that uh, when we send the signal, its power, part of its power is absorbed by the environment. And uh, so at the end, when it uh, reaches the receiver part, it will have a lower amplitude and lower power. So actually, uh, our power, our signal is attenuated by environment. So uh, the, the solution is we have to increase the power of signal at the transmitter part as much as we can. And that's why we use power amplifier. We increase the power of signal and we want to be sure that when our power reaches the receiver part, it will be detected by receiver. And actually this power amount, this power value, depends on application. It changes when we have a high, when we have long distance, like mobile maybe or radar, we need high power. We need to uh, amplify more. We need to have a high output power at the uh, transmitter part. But when it's like a, something for a close distance like Bluetooth, we don't need to have a high transmitter power. The frequency at which maximum gain occurs in an RF amplifier is made variable by changing the inductance or capacitance of the tuned circuits. So a power amplifier has active and passive components like transistors and inductor capacitors. So we can tune them uh, and we can reach the desired output power value, maximum desired gain that we want. An RF amplifier can tune over a desired range of frequency, input frequencies. Uh, we can have a power amplifier which operates at a single frequency or we can tune power amplifier to operate in a frequency range or band starting from F1 ending in F2. Power gain of RF amplifier is always limited at high radio frequencies. This is one of the uh, challenges of the design when we increase the power, when we increase the frequency our power decreases. We have to be careful about that. That's one of the reasons that actually limits them. Us, uh, when we are trying to design a very high frequency amplifier, we will suffer from uh, this uh, kind of drawbacks, like a lower power gain. So let's see where is the place of power amplifier in our system. Uh, we have a transmitter and as you see we have different kind of blocks. So um, here we have a mixer, local oscillator, filter, antenna. As you see, the PA is the last block and we connect PA to the antenna. And so here, Imagine that at the end of this uh, block, uh, it means that at the beginning of the power amplifier, we have a signal which has low power, and this is the input power. We use this power amplifier in order to amplify this signal and higher uh, and have higher power. And later, we this signal will uh, will be conducted to antenna to be transmitted. For example, let's say we we can have one watt power for GSM, but when it's like a Bluetooth or something, sometimes we have like a 0.1. Uh, what our power at the output of power amplifier. So uh, let's talk about some uh, goals that uh, actually some requirements uh, the most important things that we want to have inside our power amplifier. Uh, typically our power amplifier drive the antenna of transmitter as you see in this picture and we also have a filter but we have to know that actually this filter is part of power amplifier and generally we call whole of this think power amplifier so this is our power amplifier we also have like a filter and matching at the input of this power amplifier so what is the purpose of this filter imagine that we have a power at the output of this power amplifier so we call this like p out let's say but if we connect the output of power amplifier directly to the antenna for example like this So uh, what we what we see from the output of this power amplifier here is the input of antenna maybe is 50. So if we do something like that, we won't be able to get enough power because this is not a matched case. So this is a wrong idea. So what should we do? We need a filter or this filter actually is a matching network. So we put this filter in the, between the power amplifier and antenna. Actually, this filter is designed to transfer the maximum power uh, from our power amplifier to antenna. So by putting filter, 
first of all actually we are uh, making the conditions here for example now if we have a filter we can make the input the z in the input impedance of this filter the the optimum impedance which is seen uh, from this power amplifier z opt so that's the reason that's the reason we we have to put the filter here in order to have the optimum impedance here otherwise if we just connect this to antenna we won't be able to have the optimum impedance at the output of power amplifier then um, we won't have the power that we need so in order to have the desired power we need the optimum impedance and we need the filter and later this filter match the z opt to the input uh, impedance of the antenna so basically this filter is a matching circuit it matches the uh, power amplifier to antenna in order to transfer the maximum power you don't have to worry about these details i had to mention here but uh, actually uh, we, we we have a lecture we have a section in this part we are going to talk about a matching but we also have a course and uh, in this part we are going to talk about the power amplifier matching and everything we have a one of our future courses is a, a design of the power amplifier we are going to design a power amplifier we uh, explain all the steps the theory the matching circuit and everything and if you're interested you can take this course and learn uh, everything about the power amplifier but here we are talking about uh, general case and uh, we are not going into details so let's talk about some design goals about power amplifier the gain is a power gain here of course is output power over input power sometimes it's at around 20 db but it changes it depends on applic application stage sometimes it's like two stage or one stage from two stage we can have like 2 db 20 db but from only one stage power amplifier is hard to get 20 db the output power is really important as we mentioned previously, the output power, for example, can be 1 watt, or sometimes we even need more, 20 watt, 40 watt, it depends. For It depends the distance and the application, actually. Sometimes it's lower than 1 watt, so output power is really important, power amplifier. Bandwidth is very important. So, uh, what about the bandwidth? Uh, we want to have a wide band amplifier it means that we want to get the gain and output power in a wide range of uh, frequency we don't want to have this results in only one single frequency so this is a wide band design but if we want to have only uh, one frequency single frequencies and narrow bands imagine that this is like a wi-fi power amplifier and it operates on a single frequency and it's 2.4 gigahertz let's say it means that we only get the gain, the desired gain and output power at this frequency. If we change the frequency of the signal to 4 GHz, 5 GHz, we won't be able to have to get the gain and the output power because this amplifier is tuned to operate at that frequency and it's a narrow band power amplifier. But if you want to have a wide band, we have to change the circuit. It's, it's much more harder and challenging. We have to change the uh, the filter at the output, matching circuit, and uh, different kind of things inside our circuit. The power efficiency is one of the most important actually goals here. What is the power efficiency? It's the delivered power over dissipated power. So let's talk about this. So imagine that we have amplifier, and this amplifier is exactly like other amplifiers. It has to be connected to the voltage source in order to do amplification we know this uh, from electronics so we always have to connect this to let's say vdd and here we have a ground so we have input and we have output so what is the dissipated power dissipated power is uh, actually the power which is used by this power and power amplifier to uh, to have a gain so it means that this power amplifier is pulling a current from here idd from a source and it's like uh, the dissipated PDC, let's say, dissipated power is VDD times IDD. So what is the goal here? We always want to have a high delivered or output power. The P delivered is the output power. It, it's, they are the same. We always want to have a high delivered power and low dissipated power. So it means that we always want to have high power efficiency. And it depends on the uh, different, uh, there are like different kind of uh, structures for power amplifier. Some of them uh, have a high power efficiency, some of them have low, so it depends on the structure. But generally, we want to have a high power efficiency. We don't want to dissipate uh, a lot of power uh, by our power amplifier. Linearity is uh, very important. We are not going to talk about linearity here, but uh, we have a course, uh, it's our second course, and um, the section two 
uh, is for linearity. We explained about the linearity, the compression point, intermodulation and everything. Um, we explained these concepts. And uh, if you are interested, you can take this course and under learn everything about the linearity. Uh, so the other one is like input and output impedance matching. We talked about this. We have to match in order to have a, a maximum power transfer. We also we also explain this in uh, in the, the matching section of this course. But we will we will of course have it, the uh, impedance matching course in the future as well. We will explain different kind of impedance matchings using a software or uh, a Smith chart and different kind of things. And heat dissipation is also related to the power dissipated. We, have, we always have to be uh, careful about heat dissipation because if we have a high power dissipation, it means that we will have high, higher temperature, high, high, uh, high heat dissipation. We have to actually uh, uh, consider uh, about this. So we have to be careful about the things in design. And also uh, for PA, we have PA tops, we have PA classic, different kind of PA structures, uh, RF amplifiers. We say they operate in different modes. We call them classes. Uh, so class A, A, B, B, C. And these kind of uh, power amplifiers, as you see, they are, they are called linear power amplifiers. They're linear, but they suffer from low efficiency. And if you have to, if you want to have a high efficiency, uh, class E and F uh, are the best choices. They are switch, uh, they are switched power amplifiers, and we can reach higher power efficiency. So here, power efficiency is high for these two classes. So as you see, uh, these classes are used. All of them are used, and uh, they are used for different kind of goals. If we need linear power amplifier, we must design B and AB. If we need a high uh, efficiency, we have to go to E and F. So we can use and depends on our application. And also we have class D, but the problem is here is uh, used for low frequency signals. And as you see, this is the overall uh, structure of the power amplifier. Uh, most of the time we have this structure. So here, for example, this is only one stage. So we have one stage, we have our transistor, DC feed, and we will have output matching network as we talked here. We always want to have the optimum uh, impedance at the output of this uh, transistor. So if we don't have this output matching, we have to connect this 50 to the output of this amplifier. And in this case, we won't be able to uh, achieve our goals. We won't be able to get a gain and power. And also we need input uh, matching network because this is 50, but the input impedance of this transistor is not 50. So we have to do a matching circuit. We have to design this in order to transfer the maximum power from the source, from this 50 ohm to the transistor. Generally, we have like this, but sometimes we have another stage, two or three stages. As you see, this is a very good example. Uh, as you see, it's a layout of uh, power amplifier IC. It's a KU band, MMIC power amplifier, and it's three stage. As you see, these are the transistors. So this is the, this is the first stage. This is the second stage, as you see the second and third stage here. So we have a uh, matching circuits be the, between these uh, stage, as you see here. So this, for example, this part is a is the matching circuit between the stage one and stage two. So as you see, these wires are uh, acting, are uh, behaving as an inductor. So we have, let's say, L1, L2, different kind of uh, inductors in a matching circuit, L3. And as you see, there are like capacitances here. These are capacitances. So basically, this matching circuits, as you see also, they, uh, we have this part in between two and three. So we have matching here, we have matching here. We also have matching at the input and we have matching at the output. As you see, it's uh, this, this figure here. So uh, we have to design matching between the stage in order to uh, match these stages together and in order to transfer the maximum power and these matching circuits here are lc network as you see these wires are l, -L and the, the, these are cap capacitors as you see here they are they have a uh, capacitors here connected to the lc and they form a band pass filter in order to uh, so band pass filter and impedance matching at the same time in order to transfer the maximum power and provide maximum power at the the output of the uh, each stage. Hey guys, thank you for watching the entire video. I'm going to provide you with a coupon for taking our fundamental basic concepts and components, RA RF101. So you can uh, get this course from our website. 
If you color the page, you just have to select the buy this course and register here. As you see, if you're not registered up to now, so you need your username, email, password, and also you have to answer a security question. And then you can uh, press the uh, register button, uh, press the sign up button, and uh, you will be able to uh, register in our website. Then after that, all you need to uh, do is going to the, the course landing page and uh, go to checkout. And as you see, click to enter your code. You can put the, the coupon code here and then apply the coupon. So then you will have this course for free and you can uh, take this course. As you see, you won't pay anything for this course. Rasoft has one of the most complete online certificate in radio frequency available which covers practical topics needed to be a knowledgeable RF engineer. Since all courses are consulted closely by design engineers and pioneers whom have worked as RF engineers in top RF companies such as Qualcomm, Broadcom, Skyworks, Intel and Apple as well as avionic companies. It covers the necessary information to land a job or successful in your career. Your first step to take the prerequisite course, RAH RF101, which we have provided the free coupon for it, RFPREREQ101. See you there shortly.